Hey, this is Spencer from Metal Recusants. And this is Dominique. Not to be confused with Dom, the founder of Metal Recusants. But yeah, we went to the Maryland Death Fest, number 12, this past weekend. We went on the last day, May 25th, uh, which had a lot of the doom metal bands, and we're really into traditional and doom metal, so that worked out for us. There we met Dom, the founder of Metal Recusants, and his friend Alex, and that was great. But yeah, I think the fest, the setup, the main venue was really good. Two outdoor stages, I think it was really well organized. Yeah, I thought they had a, a good setup as far as uh, organizing the stages from the food and the vendor tents and the band tents all divided out. Definitely. This year they had two outdoor stages in the main venue and they had two other venues that were indoor, so they really divided the bands up more so this year which ended up working out because a lot of the doom metal bands were at the main venue so people like us would want to go see them and yeah i think yeah the setup was great uh, i thought it was also it was more open a lot of definitely people would be less crowded and definitely a lot of people to move around more so yeah i think there was more room near the stages for people to crowd around definitely more space overall good setup all right, so the band that opened up the day was Windhand, which is a stoner doom metal band from Virginia, female fronted. Yeah, they have an interesting sound. The, the singer, she does a lot of like wails, a lot of like long notes. And I think they are a pretty good opener. They're kind of like a less interesting Acid King to me. That might sound kind of rude, but that's all I think. I, I thought they were a good opener. They had a uh, decent energy for the audience, t- considering the fact that they are a relatively new band. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the vocal levels and the instrumentation was well balanced, and I, I, I think she brought in a, a larger female audience, which is always nice. Yeah, I think more so this year there there were more females mm-hmm. in attendance, which is good. But yeah, I think they played well, and I, I enjoyed them. I was fairly familiar with mm-hmm. them and their work, yeah. so I enjoyed them as an opener. All right, so the next band that played was Bong Ripper which is an instrumental stoner doom metal band. Um, and I, I joked that uh, there was a vendor there that sold like bowls and different like smoking related items. And I joked that that was the Bong Ripper merch. Yeah, they're a pretty decent stoner doom metal. They're kind of like sleep, uh, sort of. Maybe like more like a modern day sleep kind of. They have like a lot of really long songs, but instrumental. But I just did, I thought they were a little less interesting than sleep. Yeah, I thought they were good. They performed well. However, the fact that they have only instrumentation, no vocals, it can be challenging to keep an audience interested, mm-hmm. and it can it can drag on to some degree. But I thought they they did they did a good job. Yeah, they performed well. After Bong Ripper was Graves at Sea which is a stoner doom metal band with harsh vocals. I'm not usually into harsh vocals, but I thought it really worked well for them. Often he sang at a really high register, which I think kind of sounded like the demon baby from Black Sabbath Born Again, Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) if if that baby could speak. I think a highlight was the song Betting on Black, in which the singer constantly repeated, you're born into this world of shit and then you die, (laughs) which is pretty morbid, but I thought the riffs were great and... um, I thought his delivery was great too, though I think unfortunately uh, the vocals weren't really balanced right with the instruments, so they got kind of lost in the background with them. Yeah, I I would say that they were good, and despite my usual distaste for such harsh vocals, um, I thought that, though I have to give him props for being able to maintain that level of consistency throughout his vocals, I thought that they sounded fairly true to their in-studio sound and I also liked the fact there was a moment in the performance where someone from the crowd shouted you rule and he's like no we don't and he was just being very modest mm-hmm. like a humble guy like and I can appreciate that that sense of uh, modesty just you know kind of gives you a vibe for how the performan- performers are so mm-hmm. they put on a good show though the next two bands Misery Index and Pseudo God we didn't see but then we did see Wrath Prayer, which is a black death metal band from Chile. They didn't have corpse paint, but they did have some face paint. And they're all right, but they did have a lot of technical problems. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the vocals weren't that audible. And I, I mean, they're kind of 
in between songs kind of messing around with our instruments trying to fix some problems um yeah. we kind of left early like half like towards the end of their set yeah they kind of it was really hard to decipher a lot of the vocals and um, they also had kind of a lackluster stage presence, considering the fact the fact that they had some painted, you know, faces, and they presented themselves to almost have some kind of persona, and then nothing came of it really. So they didn't really keep my interest that much, mm -hmm. unfortunately. The next band was Inquisition, which is a two-piece black metal band from Colombia. It was a just a drummer and then a guitarist and singer. Leaving out the bass, I thought worked well just because i feel like in extreme metal the bass is often underutilized anyway so i think just having uh the two-piece band worked fine mm -hmm. and they were in full corpse paint which is pretty cool because as we all know it's not real black metal if you're not in corpse paint mm -hmm. i'm not really into black metal but i thought they had instrumentally they had a traditional thrashy vibe which i appreciated and this is, I think, where the pit got really intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this was the first band to really get the crowd riled up enough to really get mosh, you know, moshing. And um, I thought that they were a good power duo that I enjoyed. And I also, I don't usually like harsh, super harsh vocals like these. However, they were balanced enough that I could actually decipher them. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the sound between the vocals and the instrumentation was very well balanced considering the level of harsh harshness in the vocals. Yeah, and I thought the singer kind of sounded like a frog. Mm -hmm. He kind of had the resonance of a frog. He had some bass to him, which I say that in a good way. I thought it really worked. It made him more distinct. Yeah, I think there was a lot of variation between his vocal style, which keeps things interesting. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, they played really well. Yeah, they were fun. And the next band, Soylent Green, we did not see. The next band was Gore Guts, which is a Canadian death metal band. They were pretty cool, but just not really my thing. I'm not really into death metal that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought they were energetic and they had a good balance in sound. They definitely had the energy to keep the crowd uh, moving. Yeah, they definitely continued the um, trend that Inquisition started. Mm hmm but the vocals didn't really vary too much in style. Uh, very consistent, heavy, harsh sound. But the lead vocalist, his guitaring was awesome, very impressive. He was putting on quite a show with his drumming techniques and I thought that he was a really good, uh, he put on some good like solos and such. Um, and I also thought that the band was very, was very friendly and talkative. The, the, the vocalist was interacting with the crowd very engaged talking with us and mm -hmm. i appreciate that because it gives them a very genuine down-to-earth feel and true. get a sense of them as individuals which i like honestly mm -hmm. very true um next was uncle acid and the deadbeats which is a band we really wanted to see we got into mm -hmm. recently yeah. um they're a british doom metal band they're like a 70s throwback they opened for black sabbath last year and they got popular pretty quickly um they only started a few years back, but just like last year, they got really popular. Really doomy. Um, their their music was really danceable too, compared to uh, the other bands. Um, not just a typical headbang, but you know you could definitely you know move your body to it. A lot of Charles Manson references. They're just they, they have a lot of great grooves. Very fun. Mm -hmm. um, there's a good amount of moshing too mm -hmm. and crowd surfing, and it was interesting because I think the intensity of the pit sort of matched the tempo yeah. of the songs that were being played to some degree sometimes yeah. during slow songs there's some I felt like there was a the heavy melodic sound uh had a great response from the audience mm -hmm. like there was this, these waves of heavy energy from the audience yeah sometimes made it awesome the moshing, moshing was a little slow mm -hmm. which i enjoyed just swaying back and forth which was good yeah it was they were like hypnotic and like they had they were very consistent with their in-studio sound mm -hmm. Um, the only thing that bothered me a little bit was I was slightly thrown off by the second guitarist overpowering Uncle Acid mm -hmm. himself. In terms of singing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was weird because I think because the mic's volume was a little lower compared to the instruments, so I think the backup singer sort of, uh, the other guitarist, he was sort of singing louder to compensate for that. Yeah. So it was weird how the backup singer kind of ended up being the lead singer. Yeah. Due to that, but I but think it was I think okay. It balanced out by the end of it, whether it was between me just getting swept up in the music or just being in the overall busyness of the crowd, mm -hmm. it worked out in the end. It was all right. 
Um, and then I was concerned about them not having a live keyboard player because um, a good amount of their songs feature keyboards a lot. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anything was lost by it. I think it ended up working out fine. Yeah, by the end of the set, I felt like I had gotten exactly what I wanted from the performance and more, and I was I was done. I was good for the night. Yeah. But then, but then Candlemas came on, and yeah. Then Candlemas. The next band was Candlemas, which is the main reason why we went there. Because I remember months and months ago when it was first announced, I was like, yes, Candlemas. Mm. Yeah, they're a Swedish epic doom metal band, and epic doom metal is what you got. Their new singer, Mats Levin, is really great. He's sort of, he's along the same vibe as the other singers they've had, but I think he works really well with the music. Yeah. Yeah, they had really great crushing riffs. I even crowd surfed for the first time to Bewitched and uh, Emperor of the Void. And that was really fun. I was going to do it with Uncle Acid, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they had a really good, they put on a great atmosphere with the lights and smoke. Oh, the yeah, the fog was, was great. Good. And yeah, they started out just completely fogged out mm -hmm. in the beginning. That was great. And I think that the the, the greatest part about it really was what the, the audience was so engaged because you know we all sang knew and loved this band and everybody was there for them yeah and i think that made it, like the whole experience just awesome yeah people are demanding 10 more songs yeah not just one more song um the and crowd think, really love them yeah and like matt's Levin, he was really engaged with the crowd and i think he put on just the right amount of theatrics for the audience and really led us on and prompted us to sing with him and it was mm -hmm. just it was just a great experience yeah and then uh during bewitched i did the uh doom stomp from the infamous bewitched music mm -hmm. video and other people were doing that in the pit as well. Yeah. And uh, that was a really great experience. Um, and then I did the same with Solitude. Yeah, I think At the Gallows End and Solitude were definitely yeah. highlights from the performance. Yeah, the last two songs, they were really great. Solitude almost felt like a religious experience. Yeah. Like everyone was ironically singing <laughs> um, along with the band. Right. And uh, yeah, the, the pit during the whole thing, during the whole set was really intense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they did slow it down at times and it there was a lot going on there. Yeah. And I mean, what it came down to is people were, were chanting to have them play more songs. Yeah. And wanted them to go on. And Definitely. honestly, they should have closed this event. Yeah. And I mean, I remember uh, Dom afterward was saying that, like, you know, out of all the bands, it was Candlemas that people were really chanting them to play more. One point I do want to make is that um, they did have a live keyboard player, but unfortunately, I really couldn't hear that much keyboard, which was... Mm. A little weird but then when I watched videos after the fact um, I could hear him a little more I heard him pretty well yeah but... um, I just thought they could have been balanced a little more mm -hmm. but yeah they had a great set yeah they were great the closer of the night was my dying bride which is a British gothic death doom metal band but yeah we were basically done after Candlemas I mean they really should have closed the night um, yeah. I mean the big reason was because um, My Dying Bride hadn't played in the U.S. for 18 years, they said, which is pretty crazy. I mean, Candlemas is older. They're, I think, a bigger band, more innovative. Yeah. And I think the crowd, to some degree, reflected that. A good amount of people left after Candlemas. Yeah, I think I have a level, a level of respect for this band. However, I don't think they should have closed. Uh, I think they have a unique and interesting sound, but I think... It becomes somewhat formulaic, and which makes it hard to stay engaged at 10.30 at night after a day full of bands. I mean, I don't... I think a lot of bands are formulaic, but I thought they did have a good variety with, uh, you know, they go from a very death metal sound to more gothic mm -hmm. with, like, you know, the, the organ and the violin, I thought added some variety, too. I mean, I think there is variety there, and they have all these interesting components that make up their songs, but I think they create this... Um, what becomes a, predict a predictable contrast, um, whether it be through the slow, deep sung vocals or sections comprised of the violin, they vary up their long songs with moments of shifting tempo, which is appreciated, but it becomes kind of obvious to me at least. Um, but fortunately, they have that variation in tempo because otherwise the songs would be unbearably long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really, I don't think I have a problem with them being predictable. I think a lot of bands are predictable. But I'm just not a huge My Dying Bride fan. Like I said, I think Candlemas should have closed it. I mean, I like them better. But I mean, I thought 
And I wasn't, I'm not too familiar with My Dying Bride's songs, but I think they were, they performed pretty well. Yeah. Though I think the crowd wasn't as big for them as they were for Candlemas. Yeah, I mean, I think, I can appreciate their vocalist who changed up his style mm -hmm. and vocals, and I definitely can appreciate the, um, the incorporation of different instrumentation, the violin and their organ sounding keyboards. But I think that, yeah, they, they would have benefited having not been the last band yeah, to perform. That's an interesting point because they might have had a bigger crowd if they played before Candlemas mm -hmm. and Candlemas closed because, um, I mean, a lot of people left, like I said. So that actually could have benefited them. Yeah, and I think I, I enjoyed the dark gothic sound. However, I think compared to the other bands that performed, they had a little less energy of sorts. So to be the last band, it actually, you know... People are tired, and I think if Candlemas were to close, that would just be that would have worked out a lot better for the event itself. Mm -hmm. They were still good, and I think that they created a unique twist yeah. for the festival overall. They definitely sounded different than all the other bands. Mm -hmm. So overall, we just had a really great, fun time. Candlemas mm -hmm. was one of the best sets I've ever seen. I mean, they are one of my favorite bands, so that does make sense. But they were just great to see. The mosh pits were fun, mm -hmm. and I did like how they sometimes got slow. They kind of correlated to the tempo sometimes, and I thought that was interesting and kind of something different, too. Yeah, I thought that each of the bands uh, performed well and brought their own, you know, components, which made everything interesting to watch each set. I had a great time. Yeah, I, I'll definitely go next year if there's bands I want to see, because mm -hmm. two years ago they had St. Vitus, and last year they had Pentagram, this year that Candlemas, yeah. so all my favorite doom metal bands. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think every year that we've gone, it's gotten progressively, we've gotten more prepared for definitely. it, and we've gotten more into it because we know mm -hmm. what, what to expect. It's definitely true. I mean, going to a festival, you know, it's definitely good to familiarize yourself with the bands and their songs. It just, knowing the songs just make the sets just yeah. Much more engaging and, and more. That's, that's fun. how I felt, especially with uh, Windhand. I mm -hmm. felt prepared for them, and I, that's what allowed me to enjoy them a lot more mm -hmm. uh, than I expected to. So, I I, I enjoyed all the the sets we watched. And Definitely had a great time watching and moshing and thrashing. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. So. So one can only look forward to maybe you know if we get to go again, that'd be awesome. If not, then we've had a great time every time we've gone. Definitely. Well, this is Spencer from Metal Recusants. And this is Dominique. From Life. Life. <laughs> All right. And Peace. see ya.